Hello, my name is Travis Lutley and I am the Curatorial Assistant in the Art Department at Glenbow. And welcome to another installment of Glenbow from Home. Today we're going to take a look at an artwork that is currently on view in the exhibition titled On Location, which can be found on Glenbow's second floor. The work we're looking at today is titled Regard. It's a photographic sculpture made in 1999 by Vancouver-based artist and professor Jin Mi Yoon. Jin Mi Yoon's work is primarily focused on issues of place and identity, and more specifically her work from the 1990s explores issues of displacement and representation in the context of Canadian settler nationalism. Regard is composed of four images, mounted in pairs, front to back, on wooden sawhorses. These sawhorses are placed in the gallery, ten feet apart to allow the audience to move through the artwork, as well as to set the components in regard to one another. The artist primarily employs the body, her own and those of others, in video and photography-based artworks. One can think of her work as performative, with the material we see in the gallery as the artistic residue of a specific and meaningful act or gesture. The artist is the figure in one pair of images, and her mother is the figure in the other pair. Both have been photographed looking out of Lauren Harris's oil painting Malign Lake, Jasper Park, Alberta from 1924, and both have been photographed looking into Emily Carr's oil painting Old Time Coastal Village from between 1929 and 1930. These images were extracted from an earlier work titled Group of 67 from 1996. To explore the themes of place and identity, Jin Mi Yoon's work often involves locating a specific body in a specific place. The implications of this act are varied and provocative. The title of the work is Regard. We know what regard. To regard someone is to esteem them, but also to regard is to look. And it's in both French and English. Um, so I guess I wanted a chance to think about my relationship with my mother in a kind of formal way. It's not a documentary or trying to give you insights into the, the particularities of my relationship to my mother, but also the fact that we're Korean women. And um, I don't think there's really been an honoring that way of Korean women. It's uh, especially within kind of forms of patriarchal nationalism in Korea. Um, so for me, it was a way to, um, not with uh, extreme self-consciousness, but some self-consciousness about what does it mean to do that? And that's why you have that in sculptural form, because I think the forms tell you that there are questions in there. Yoon's work is always site-specific or site-sensitive, as she terms it. In regard, there are four sites that are referenced. The two landscapes depicted in the paintings, the space depicted in the photograph occupied by the painting and the figure, and the gallery we the audience are viewing the artwork in. In the case of Regard, the particular work that the Glenbo Museum has, which is called from a lo larger work, work in terms of the images, uh, a group of 67 of myself and my mother. Um, let's look at Emily Carr and let's look at Lauren Harris. So. Emily Carr's Old Time Coastal Village and um, Lauren Harris's Moline Lake. Those are very canonical or very impactful icons, if you like, uh, of a specific sense of place, uh, one regional and one kind of standing in for the nation, which is kind of interesting in terms of think about what that means in terms of Emily Carr and Lauren Harris. Um, so, if you just think of those without the figures, then we inherit certain kind of uh, narratives, uh, stories that are attached. However, when you put uh, a figure, let's say my mother, myself, and then in the large work, the people that I knew in the Korean Canadian community here in Vancouver, um, something shifts in that story receive narratives and how they're disseminated. So I think that's what interests me about places and bodies or people because they're at the level of images and uh, the images circulate in certain ways and then um, they're recirculated once you kind of uh, put those in relation, let's say, the, the people and the place uh, and stories. And therefore, um, I think a lot of questions uh, uh, emerged from that.
interaction. So that's why I'm always interested in a body in a place to say, what does this body mean in this place? And in terms of all the stories that circulate related to that body, that place. The artist is keenly aware of how an audience will physically interact with her artwork, and as such, approaching regard and moving around and through it are vital to its experience. There is a self-aware quality to the work that becomes evident as we move between and around the components. We are alternately the observer and the observed, and the work seems to oscillate between being an art object and an art audience. The artwork deploys the gaze to a hallucinatory effect as we regard the artwork and the figures in the artwork regard us and each other. It's the viewer <laughs> and where the viewing happens. Because if I show a group of 67 in Seoul or Taipei or in Japan, which I have, you know, and uh, or, or, or Yokohama, I should say, then, then they're very different. They mean very different things. And that's what I want them to be because it's not a static thing. When we're talking about relationalism, they're moving pieces of relations that are historically informed um, in the larger sense. So that's what I want. I want the conversations. But my work is also about very specific places because I don't like to think about things in generic ways. I need the viewer to complete the work. I mean, I, I mean, you know, sure, I'm as an image and as a kind of gesture, I'm thinking about my mother and myself, but really, I mean, we're not physically in those forms. I mean, we have a relationship, <laughs> a real one. That That's also a kind of space for the viewer. You know, like, I, I think um, artists need people to engage the work. I mean, they exist in a way... You know, when you turn off the lights at the Glenbow, they're still there, those objects. But you don't get animated unless someone attends to them. The artist wants to see what the implications of embedding the racialized immigrant body in the landscape are. By displacing our gaze and obscuring the landscape, the artist asks us to consider who creates these images and why, and who are they for. Imagery and the gaze have played a fundamental role in the establishment and perpetuation of colonialism throughout its history. The act of locating the non-European body in these landscapes might initially appear benign, but is actually quite subversive. We are living in, 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 in uh, white settler colonial context. That's what I immigrated to, that's what we're all in. However, um, now, the way that I think about the gaze it's more in line with regard, you know, what I said about wanting to uplift. It's more affirmative. It's not as reactive. It's not speaking back. It's speaking with. And um, at the same time, it's deeply invested in um, a kind of possibility and possibility for how we might live together with many other beings in the world and non non living things too and so it's a very different um approach but one that i don't think would have been possible without 30 years of passing through that trajectory of 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 the gaze and through the use of the camera and kind of performative relationship to photography and, and video and to spatializing those things and forms, uh, working installation, working installations so that they do have a kind of spatial relation. And I think now sound has become really, really important. Jin Mi Yoon's work is about offering questions and not answers and is open to interpretation. Her artworks are invitations to contemplate the themes she is addressing. And for art, it's, it's, that's... That's the baseline is like art matters and uh, please keep helping art matter for everybody and bring more people in, you know, bring more people in to share that and to allow for a kind of creative relationship with their life and also to change the things that are killing us.
I think of it all kind of as one movement through this thing called a practice, which is, you know, a verb, not a noun. And I feel tremendously grateful um, to have made life as an artist, to have this way of understanding the world and sharing it. And that sharing always surprises me because people will see things in the work that I didn't see. And I, I think that's exactly it. That, um, of course, I'm talking about the things I'm thinking about. Uh, I'm, I'm putting it in form as forms in the work, but that's not it. That's not what art is. The art is the thing that happens between the viewer and the work. And, and that's the beauty. That's the magic. That's the conversation. That's the thing that gives us a sense of tremendous, uh, like creativity and love for like moving things through our bodies into the world, you know, as artists, it's just like, Whoa, that's, that's a real high, right? For me, I, I would like my work to be best served as a kind of opening up and a, and a kind of a creative imaginative response to what I experience in the world and feel for the world. I also want to slow things down. You know, I don't want if in some ways I will, I want to, um, it's like advertising, even though it's become increasingly sophisticated speeds up things because that ultimately you want to buy that thing. That's what it's trying to hook us into. But I think art slows down. So we can think more fully in lots of different ways that we think thinking is not just with their you know what we think thinking is with their brains all over thinking um so that we can creatively imagine something else regard is one of two artworks by jin mi yoon held in the glenbo's art collection the other work is a multi-channel video titled welcome stranger welcome home which was commissioned by the glenbo in 2002 as part of our connections to collections program